I'm Valpreet Jay Kanodian, Professor of Interventional Cardiology based in Newcastle University and the Freeman Hospital in Newcastle upon Tyne, United Kingdom. And I'm the Chief Investigator for the British Heart Foundation Senior Vita Trial. Yeah, as you know, I'm based in uh, Newcastle where I was dealing with a lot of older people coming into the cath lab with heart attacks. And of course, not all older people are the same. They're very heterogeneous because of their presence of frailty, cognitive impairment, multiple long-term conditions. So we have shown in our, uh, some of our pilot studies that all of these characteristics are associated with adverse outcomes. And in particular, if you look at the randomized clinical trials, looking at the best care for patients with NSTEMI, at the time when we were designing our study, there was hardly any studies. But then if you look at the MINAP database and the NICAR database, 50% of NSTEMI happens in people that are 70 years of age and over. So we have huge volume of patients with um, NSTEMI in this age group, but very little evidence. So that really is what prompted us to look at this population in great detail, which we have done through our pilot study, which is the NIH, our Biomedical Research Center, uh, Newcastle ICON-1 study. We've looked at so many uh, characteristics, the heterogeneous features of these older people, and that really nicely led us on to this um, British Heart Foundation Senior Vita trial, which I'm going to, of course, present at the ESC Congress. 70, as I mentioned to you, we chose the age 75 years of age is because that's the age group with very little evidence, yet NSTEMI happens in them. So, and also with a definition, 65 is not old anymore. So, although there's defin the actual definition of older age starts at 65, but we realized, you know, as people are living longer, so we, we chose the, uh, the universal uh, cutoff of 75 years of age to define our older population. And they all type 1 and STEMI patients were included. So we excluded if they were STEMI or late presenting STEMI, for example. And we did not discriminate whether they had cognitive impairment or frail. So we included all patients with frailty, multiple long-term conditions, cognitive impairment. In England, we have ethical permission to recruit patients with, uh, with cognitive impairment. So it was a most of the studies will exclude these populations, so we had an all comer older adults with type 1 and STEMI. Our oldest patient is 103 years of age. So as long as they have a diagnosis of type 1 and STEMI, they were eligible for the study. So once they signed the consent form, we uh, randomized them into medical therapy for the treatment of and STEMI. That is guideline recommended medical therapy versus medical therapy plus invasive care. The invasive care involves coronary angiography with a view to revascularization, either in the form of a PCI, percutaneous coronary intervention, or coronary artery bypass surgery. And we also measured the frailty scores, cognitive impairment, multiple long-term conditions in all the patients at baseline. And most of the previous studies, the follow-up is only for one year, Whereas in Seniorita, we have median follow-up of four years. So in a sense, Seniorita is the largest study with the longest follow-up to date. So the median age of these patients is 82 years of age. So I've already told you the oldest patient is 103 years of age. So majority of the patients, more than 70% um, of patients are aged 80 years and over. 45% of patients were female. So as you know, women are grossly underrepresented in clinical research. So we made it our intention, on intention, we approached our female participants. And I'm very delighted that we were able to achieve almost 50-50 representation of men and women in our trial. In addition to that, 30% of patients were severely frail according to the various frailty indices that we utilized. 60% of patients, when we did their cognitive function assessment, had impaired cognitive function. And pretty much all of the patients had one or more multiple cognitive, multiple um, long-term condition. And all of the other risk factors that we look for, hypertension, diabetes, and it was very enriched and balanced between the two groups and exactly the sort of pa patients that I wanted to include in the trial and we ended up recruiting in the end. So the key findings of the study, our primary outcome was a composite of cardiovascular mortality or non-fatal myocardial infarction 
throughout the duration of the follow-up that was median of four years of follow-up. So when we compared a conservative strategy versus an invasive approach, um, we showed that there was no difference in the composite risk of cardiovascular mortality or non-fatal myocardial infarction. But when we look at, looked at the, uh, the uh, components of the primary outcome, again, the cardiovascular mortality at a median of 4.01 years, there was no difference between the conservative group and the invasive group. Whereas there was 25% relative risk reduction in the occurrence of non-fatal myocardial infarction at a median of four years. In addition, we also looked at the occurrence of repeat angiography, repeat revascularization procedures. So patients in the invasive group are significantly lower urgent revascularization rate when compared to the conservative group. And there was no difference in other secondary outcomes such as stroke, TIA, bleeding as well, for example. One of the key things that I would like to highlight, you know, we talked about underrepresentation of older people in clinical research. Um, when you look into the details, people are afraid to do procedures on older people because they're afraid that older people have more complications. Whereas in Senior Rita, we showed that um, undertaking invasive procedure was very safe. The overall procedural complication rate was less than 1%. That includes significant bleeding, for example. So our main message in this largest clinical trial to date with the longest follow-up, we say that invasive procedure is safe in older people, but it did not reduce a composite outcome of cardiovascular mortality or non-fatal myocardial infarction, but there was reduction in the occurrence of non-fatal myocardial infarction or repeat revascularization procedure. Um, no, I don't think. I was not particularly surprised because recently we um, published a meta-analysis meta of studies that, we, um, that were there before. Uh, six small studies with an overall sample size of uh, 1,480, excluding senior Rita, and we found exactly the same. So there was no difference in mortality, but there was significant reduction in myocardial infarction and urgent revascularization. So we have replicated that. We, we found similar findings in Senior Rita, and I will be performing an updated meta-analysis together with Senior Rita, looking at a number of subgroups as well. So uh, the take-home message is that Senior Rita provides guidance to clinicians as well as to patients to make an informed decision whether or not they need to undergo an invasive angiography. So we can say to patients, pe people get older, they they have higher mortality rates, but doing invasive procedures, we are not saving their lives, but we certainly are preventing them from coming back to hospital with further heart attack and further repeat procedures. And it is a safe procedure.